Thank you and, and good evening. And I'm really very kind of moved and honoured to be here. It's obviously I was brought up in North London and um, so I never ever visited South London until <laughs> I was 18. And that was only because I saw, uh, do you remember there was a programme called Nationwide and they did a feature, you've got to forgive me because I was led astray that, <laughs> that, um, that, you, that you, could, you could buy drugs in South London and, and meet women and um, I came once and as with most things in my life, it didn't quite work out for me. Um, but it's really uh, wonderful to be here. I, I just want to say how, how really honoured I am to be with you, Mike, and with John, and with, with Jenny, um, and to, and I'll, I'll, I'll return to some of those themes about sanctuary, but just to say that I reiterate those views, but also for me to be here in Putney, you know, where the Putney debates, there's the saying on the wall, for really I think that the poorest he that is in England has a life to live as the greatest he. We could say she as well, I don't want to get involved in that. But I think that the Blue Labour is the only sort of ideology ever that reconciled Rainsborough with Archbishop Lord. But, you know, that, that's one very good way of understanding it. Archbishop Lord did resist enclosures and he had his head chopped off, and that has to be honoured. And Rainsborough spoke up for liberty and democracy, and he also had his head chopped off. You know, the, the, what happened in Putney was vital. And, and what they were talking about in Putney is vital for us to retrieve and to live in, I think, because they spoke about a commonwealth. That was the concept that was involved. Um, a commonwealth where, essentially, we've got to think that, that the wealth of the country was, was held in, in common. And this concept of the common good is, I think, really a vital one because it's there in our political culture. So we've got the common law, which is something that needs to be um, retrieved. There's, as many of you have noticed, we actually have a house of commons. You know, it is a commons. Um, we've got the common good and also what we're living through is the besieging of the commons. I really love this idea of a sanctuary. And a sanctuary is a place where you defy the worldly powers. That's how I understand it. The, the power of money and the, and the actual domination. It's a place of non-domination, a sanctuary of, uh, um, and, the, and a space. And that is directly um, linked to, I think, the idea of the commons. So when we think about um, the state here, um, here in England, we've got a very peculiar state. You know, that's one thing that's, that's true, I, I think, and neglected. So we do, we maybe in two weeks' time, we'll have a sovereign state, again, that can um, actually act. So it's a place of decision. But what's neglected in, in the state is that there's also a body politic. And this is where I think the Christian tradition is absolutely um, fundamental. Uh, and what do I mean by that is that, that if you look at two others who neither renounced Lord or Rainsborough, John, I don't know what you think, but you, I, would, I would say that Tawney, Tawney reconciled them too. Yeah, um, and his whole point was about incarnation, that we're embodied beings. Just say who Tawney is. Oh, Tawney was... Um, he was a kind of guy who didn't really want to be an academic, but ended up as an academic. That's what I mean. He was an economic historian. He was a very good friend of Attlee and a very good friend of Temple. So this post-war settlement that John was talking about was completely, completely infused with Christian thought. I don't think that can be... And, and they spoke about a commonwealth, and they spoke about um, the sharing of the burdens... And, the, and they also spoke about luck, you know, that some people are unlucky and it's a mad thing to think that you can abolish luck, but you can mitigate against its disasters. So it was unbelievably, because we don't talk about it now, it was completely bounded by this idea of reciprocity that you put in and you got out. It wasn't considered a right in any way. This was not embedded in rights theory, but was to give the polity some, some substance. Um, so we're embodied beings and we're embedded beings. In other words, we're social beings. 
in our nature. We're, we're not, Jenny, I thought, spoke about this very well. We do not find our fulfillment outside of relationships, but, but in relationships. And that's another area where the retrieval of a Christian language of grace and a Christian land of, of fidelity is absolutely vital because there could be good relationships and bad ones. We know this. There could be abusive relationships. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this whole concept of gaslighting is a really, really important one in our contemporary um, society, but also in our state. And this is a vital aspect of the body politic and the way that the church is so central to this, um, is that place is represented. So. I put you on jargon alert. You are on real jargon alert now, because I'm going to talk. Get away with gaslighting. Yeah, because I'm going to gaslighting. I think I can get away with because it kind of appeals to the young. But um, <laughs> what I'm thinking about um, really is that we're confronted by a very inhumane power, which has dominated our political thought. So even when John said the third way, I immediately jolted and said, "Not, not that." Not that, by no means that. Because that was, in some ways, a very wicked theology in, in a fundamental way. Because what it said was, okay, jargon alert, telos. So what by the which you mean. Exactly, by which I mean that there's a predetermined end to which we are bound. Um, progressives tend to call it, um, you know, I just want to signal that the least true thing in politics that's ever been said is that things can only get better, right? So, and that's my definition of a progressive. They think there's an arc of history and that people like me are really on the wrong side of history and that's all that needs to be said. So let's just say that we understand, I hope, the fall and we understand um, tragedy and things don't necessarily get, get better at all. And what the third way was based on was that there's, te there's technology, that's called reality, there's a technological telos, and that is that because of the internet, place does not matter anymore, relationships don't matter anymore. Um, and so that there's a technology that transcends place, transcends borders, um, under, undermines tradition. So there's a technological, what's called jargon alert, technological determinism, that we can't, this is a fate that we have to accept. And it undermines all those things, relationships, place, tradition, and any form of solidarity. Right? And that links up with the other features of globalization, which is secondly, that there is no alternative to capitalism, um, and that capitalism is the best conceivable system. And we have to understand what that means when I say it is that it's now, here's a big, big you have 11 seconds. jargon word. Okay, I'll take 30 because the word's long. Okay. Um, and that is commodification, right? And, and commodification means that something that wasn't produced for sale, let's say nature, you know, or human beings, are in fact commodities that should be treated and moved around and exploited in that way. And the second aspect of this wicked third way theology is, is the idea that the state is there purely in terms of administration. It's an administrative state, that its democracy is bound, I've, I've clocked it. And the third aspect is liberalism, by which I don't mean liberty, I mean the ideal of, of an individual emancipated from all obligation and relationship to others that is purely self-defining. These have all come together, so what I, I had more to say, including about sanctuary, but, but what I would say here is, is that there needs to be, the Christianity offers a language and it offers a tradition that is absolutely vital for restoring place, restoring the integrity of relationships and conceptualizing what the common good could look like.